I'm going on a road trip solo. I say solo and I'm, I mean we and you're coming with me. We're going to Essex to see a nuclear bunker, which apparently they would have thrown Margaret Thatcher in if there was a nuke. Then we're going to Bath, then we're going to Torquay, and in Torquay there's like prehistoric caves, so I'm interested in that. And then I've got some family in Cornwall, so I'll, I'll stay with them for a bit. I just want to walk up a big hill, say, oh, that was, that was a nice hill. I hey, look over there, there's another big hill. I'm gonna walk over there. That's that's the dream. When I went to Oxford for that, that job, when I came back, I was just, in the video, my hostel experience, I filmed that like the second I got back. And I think you can just see how it's, it's still, I'm still quite happy to be back like home is now refreshing I, you know what I mean I'm recalibrating if you like I don't know why but staying in a hostel just makes me feel alive I'm talking too much let's just go to the place hello future Ant here thought I'd step in to take over for a second I'm just the worst vlogger I don't I don't film anything so the nuclear bunker, really cool. <laughs> Let's start a counter. How many times do I say cool in this video? I walked in and there's nobody there. There's nobody there to greet you or, you know, make you pay anything to go in. There's just this this TV and a bloke explaining how these wands work. Um, you know, you walk around, ends the number, walk with it, and it sort of, you know, it goes around with you. Everyone kept saying to me, oh, in the winter, it's the worst time to ever go on holiday. Actually, it was great because there was absolutely nobody there. No one. It's like it was freshly evacuated. After that first corridor, down to the left, there's these huge doors and like apparently they're um, the weight of two cars. Um, and that's to like deflect like the fire blast which would go all the way down that, that corridor. So like the, the turning would take most of the power and the force and shit. Super cool. I got to see the, the radio studio where Margaret Thatcher would have uh, spoken on the radio to all the peasants in the outside world who'd be, you know, soaking up some rads. If you played any of the Fallout games, you'll just really appreciate a nuclear bunker. It's really interesting. So in this area, I'm allowed to film. But even better, I'm allowed to dress up. <laughs> oh yes. So it's like a long coat. It always gets me. <gasps> you my mummy. Yeah. What a classic. But you didn't see that coming. This place is really cool. There's like nobody here as well. Because it's like pissing outside. It's like one of those scary walkthrough things that I'm just walking through on my own. All of this stuff is just it's just been left here by the government. It's so cool. Highly recommend this place. You know, I quite like this jacket. It's quite nice. I can't show you a lot, but I can definitely show you this room. Really cool. I'll donate a pound. I mean, I'm showing this, but for all you know, I could just take take my pound back. So whatever. Trust me on this. So this is where the um, well, the army and the navy and like well back around there was like the Ministry of Defence. It was their little their little computers and work desks. How cute! I say cute. It's fucking nuclear fallout. It's horrible. I got to like the the back entrance of the place, and uh, the wand was saying like, uh, if you didn't make it down these stairs in time, you would have been locked out, and you would have spent like the rest of your life. In these, in this, on this staircase, and if you didn't make it in, at the back door, there would have been just like thousands of bodies, just dead from radiation poisoning. So interesting. There's the gift shop, and like again, there was nobody there. It was just a, an honesty box system of paying. So it was like seven pound fifty. I gave a tip of fifty p. Look at me. I highly recommend it. It's uh, at this location. Genuinely, like, it's really cool. As the bunker is in Essex, I thought, why not see my good friend Dean, the bloke who built the TARDIS. He's a doctor too, right? He's not just, he didn't just build a TARDIS, he's an actual doctor, but anyway. Well, oh. no, oh, good morning, good morning. Last night I thought I'd uh, keep in the TARDIS, you know. So today we're going to Bath. It's a three hour drive. Wish me luck. Should I just put that as a thumbnail? Would it pretty get more views? No, I won't do it. Okay, I've arrived at Hostel in Bath. It's a little bit trampy. It's a, it's a bit... Ugh. The only uh, redeeming feature is uh, that. It's all right, I guess. Let's go to the baths. Oh, hello again. Future Ant here. Just, uh, you know, stepping in. To help this flow better. Now, the baths were really cool. Very interesting. Um, if See, if you're into all this history shit, You'll love it, but if you're not, it's just a 
big puddle. They were gonna shut in two hours, um, and every hour they do a tour. I was the only one who turned up for the tour, so I had my own personal tour guide to just walk around with. Shout out to Juliet, she was great. Someone give her a raise. She was nice, she was just, she knows her stuff. Being a tour guide, she's really good at knowing about baths. When I finished off at the baths, I, uh, I went back to my hostel, and it was about six o'clock, and I had nothing to do. But then this, this girl came in, um, her name was Alicia, she was Swedish, and she was, I don't know, anyway, we ended up going for a drink. Me, go for a drink. Now, I don't know much about alcohol, or cocktails, or any drinks, really. I, I've just had, like, something called a Cuban with Jake once. So that was the only thing I knew what to ask for, so I went up to the counter and I was like, hey, can I have a Cuban, please? And he was just like, what, a cigar or the drink? Yes, the cigar, please. And he was dead serious. He was serious. He didn't just stop and go, <laughs> I'm really joking. No, he meant it. <laughs> so we hung out for a few hours. She was saying, um, I mean, the headline here, I was like, so what do you, what do you want to do? What's the dream? Uh, she wants to, she, be, she wants to be a writer. And I was like, oh, brilliant. Have you ever written anything before? Do you want to, what, what do you want to write? And she was like, I want to make a female friendly porn film. That's not Swedish. I'm sorry. A female friendly porn film. I suppose someone's got to write it. She works in a bar, so she knows about all the drinks. I'm, I'm just like, okay, I'll just have a, a bit of yours or something. And then she just bought so many fucking drinks. I had shots. It was like coffee and alcohol. I don't like coffee. I don't like alcohol. I wasn't going to like it. I didn't like it. It was horrible. But no, she was really nice. Alicia, if you're watching this, which you're probably not, um, have a nice life. Moving on. In the morning, I went back to my car. Right. I wasn't really allowed to park here all night. So I may have a ticket. Please, please don't let me have a ticket. Please. Fuck, I do. This ticket was issued at two o'clock. I think I arrived here at like half one. They're fucking quick, aren't they? Always pay your ticket straight away because then it's only half price. So, 35 pounds. <sighs> Great. <laughs> this is meant to be a cheap holiday. <laughs> Next up, we're going to Torquay. It's about a two hour drive. Um, but that's where the prehistoric caves are. Now this, this is what I'm really interested for. Interested about, interested in. So, um, let's go. And I hope all the alcohol has left my bloodstream and I don't want to be pulled over. I feel fine. I'm probably fine. The Kent Caverns in Torquay are epic. Go to them, it's really interesting, really cool. I had a really great tour guide called David. He took me and like loads of other people around the, the caves and stuff. Um, this is called The Face, because it looks a bit like a face, sort of. He was saying about when the Romans first discovered this cave, and they covered this naked man in like goose fat, just so he could like squeeze through, so he could explore the cave a bit more. Fun fact, that wasn't going anywhere, I just thought, just thought I'd mention it. He was saying about this type of cave bear, that they've, they've only discovered five in the world, and two of them were discovered in this cave. And it's a replica of its skull. It was really cool. We were really deep in the, the caves. And um, apparently they found like seashells. They were, they were like charred. And apparently cavemen or, you know, people after cave, I don't really know. They used to grow moss, put it on the, the shells, um, cover it in like animal fat, light it, and it would stay lit for like an hour. And using the same method, he replicated it. Then he put the light out. And he said, this is the darkest dark you'll ever experience ever. And I was like, you know what? That's so cool. <laughs> it's so dark. I mean, this is pretty dark, but there'll always be like, you know, a little light in your room or a street light. Just, but it was like pure black. I couldn't see anything. I don't think my eyes would never adapt to it. That's how dark it was. Stalactites are the ones coming down from the ceiling and stalagmites are the ones on the floor. David pointed out um, this one stalagmite. He was like, this is our fastest growing one. And there was like a drop every like five seconds or something. And he said, this thing grows 0.006 millimeters or something a year. No, yeah, a year. And he said, if you want to see this grow an inch, come back in 16,000 years. What? It's amazing. I mean, I liked it so much. Where is it? I bought a key ring. Ta-da. I don't ever buy key rings. Highly recommend the caves. Here's the location. Go visit it. It's really cool. Brilliant. Anyway, after the caves, I went to my hostel for that night. I've just got to the, the hostel I was going to stay at tonight. Um, 
no one's answering the door. So, I don't know, I might go to my next place. Which was deeper in Cornwall and a place called Lost Withiel, which is where my family lived. I didn't get any fancy car shot driving down to Cornwall. I just, I forgot, all right? Again, not a good vlogger. <laughs> it was hilly. It was like the footage from before, but there were more hills on the side. Anyway, moving on. On the first day while in Cornwall, I went to uh, Bodmin Jail, which is, it was, it was like 10 miles away. Oh my god. Huh, did I get you? Is that actually liquid or not? No, it's not. It was this like 17th century jail. Um, it, it was quite interesting. It had quite a few big serial killers there and stuff, but I was I kind of found it more interesting to see the ones that the, the, the smaller crimes and what they'd get, like their punishment. I went to the basement, and there was this weird psychic woman. She was weird. She comes over to me and she's just like, hello. I work here, I can talk to the dead, or something. I'm just like, oh, yeah. those kind of people, they just annoy me. I mean, some of them, not all of them, but most psychic people are just like, hey, I'm psychic. Listen to me be psychic. I'm gonna keep talking about me being psychic for ages. It's just like, shut up, I don't care. You're not psychic, you're a fucking idiot. The next day I woke up with uh, a really bad cold. Element. <laughs> Element. But I, I didn't want to sit at the house all day, so. I had to go and do something. So I hopped on a train and went to Truro. <coughs> the only interesting thing was a man gave me a tea bag when I got off the train. I went to the cathedral, it was shit. I literally just got back on the train and went home. I was just so sick. Oh, by the way, yeah, the family I was staying with, uh, they have a dog, that's Peanut, and that's a cat. Can't remember its name, but it meowed a lot. <coughs> Cornwall is very hilly. I wanted hills, I got hills. I'm currently trying to look for a castle. Apparently it's this way. Apparently it's a castle on a hill. Uh -huh. Ed Sheeran lyrics. Uh -huh. I get it. This place is so barren. Like I've seen one person who said good morning and that was it. This place looks like bears live here. Here we go. I'm ascending my first hill. Blimey. See, I'm just amazed by a hill. I'm so easily amused. Well, if that's not the most English thing you've ever seen, I don't know what it is, really. I was trying to find this castle, and I did find it. But £4.80 and it's shut in the winter. Brilliant. Love it. When I was a wee nipper, I used to spend a, a lot of time in Cornwall with, uh, with family. But one town that really sort of means something to me is Foy. I went back to the town, and it was the first time I'd been there in like 10 years. I don't know, it was ages. And every corner I'd go around, I'd be like, oh, I remember that thing that happened there one time. Oh, I remember that. Oh, I remember walking up that hill and hating it. So I walked the same route that I would have done ages ago that I absolutely despised to see if I'd like it. And I do, it was nice, it's lovely. And there's a big castle, uh, what's it called? St. St. Catherine's Castle or something? It's, it's a fort, I don't know. Fun fact, that big house on the cliff is Dawn French's house. The next day, I left, but on the way back, <laughs> Fucking cool. It's fucking cool. I stopped off at the Jurassic Coast, and I don't know if you've ever heard of it. At the Jurassic Coast, right, the cliff is just clay. It's preserved millions of fossils. Millions. The Jurassic Coast is massive. Now, everyone goes to Lyme Regis, and that's like the most popular one. But um, if you're going to go fossil hunting, go to Charmouth. I don't know if, it's, if there's better fossils or more fossils. Apparently it's safer and it's better in the winter because... The, uh, the sea's rougher and hits against the, the cliff. You get it, whatever. I was walking along the beach and looking at the rocks for about 20 minutes and I couldn't find anything. But then this dog runs over to me with a rock in its mouth. No, it didn't have a fossil in its mouth. This isn't a movie. So I threw it and I got talking to the owner and I was like, is this the fossil place? And she was like, yeah. She was telling me about what kind of rocks the fossils would be in and you know, she cleared it up for me, so it was nice. And I was walking with her for ages. Shout out to Jenny and her dog Styx. Anyway, so after an hour of walking the beach with Jenny and Sticks, I found this. Now this this is the best one, I think. It's like a little family, a little family of ammonites and worms and shit. It's just cool. Super interesting. I love it. <laughs> Fossils. Fossils. Da da da. What's that from? Fossils. Da da da. I didn't even watch Phineas and Ferb that much as a kid. Why do I remember that that reference? Oh, and also, look at the size of this monster fossil. Imagine this thing, like, that big, 
like slithering or what were they? Were they snails or were they like Omanyte? Like the Pokemon? Like did they have tentacles and shit? I don't know. Last stop was Broadchurch or West Bay. Broadchurch, whatever. The tide was coming in so I didn't really walk along the beach but I mean, you know, I got the main idea. Shit vlogger, I get it, whatever. I just feel like I've driven so, so long it needs more screen time. Cool. While I was at Broadchurch, I had a look at all the locations, so I found like um, D.I. Hardy's house, you know, the, the cliff where the, the kid didn't get whatever. And after that, I drove for like four hours, but that's basically the end of my road trip. Now that I'm back, I do feel, I mean, like I predicted, you know, recalibrated. I feel better. I just feel like really on it. I don't even know what that means, I just feel on it. I think road trips and just traveling in general is definitely my new favorite thing. I absolutely love it. I think I've always known that I'd enjoy it, but I just couldn't find the motivation to do it. But now I can. I mean, you might find this interesting being gone for a week. I spent all together with hostels, petrol, food. I spent about 170 quid, I think. I mean, you gotta take into account like, you know, the baths, the, the caves, um, the bunker, you know, it all cost money and shit. Before my road trip, I was just sort of losing my my faith in humanity, you know? Everyone's always such a miserable bastard. No one ever talks to you on the street or anything. But just on this road trip, everyone I met was lovely. Everyone. Complete strangers were just nice. And um, if we want to try and say that this road trip taught me something, it's probably that people aren't that bad, apart from the ones in my area, because they're pretty manky, innit? See you next week, over an ant.